This time I'd like to call the order of the regular scheduled meeting of the City of Rocky Mount. And um, as we as we set up for our prayer today, I'd like for everybody to pause and think and keep Trace Christman's family in thoughts and prayers. You know, following his untimely death this past Sunday afternoon. He was known for his love of family, his dedication to hard work, and his thriving desire to learn every day. Trace made an everlasting impact on those who knew him in this great city. May his memory live all. So if y'all please stand and observe a moment of silence. Thank you. So I'm going to ask the uh, city clerk if you could please call the roll. Council Member Knight? Here. Blackwell? Here. Here. TJ Walker? Here. Daltridge? Here. Harris? Here. Javaris Walker? Here. Yes. Okay, great. That brings us to item number four on our agenda, which is consideration of the minutes of regular scheduled committee of the whole meeting, which was held on April 8, 2024, for the minutes of regular scheduled city council meeting held on April 8, 2024. Request that I have a motion to approve those minutes. So motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Councilman Daltridge. Is there a need for discussion? Was that Walker? I'm sorry. Second by Councilman Jabbar's Walker. Uh, is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those like sign. Okay, the motion uh, is approved. The minutes are approved. This time I'll ask for consideration of, uh, of additions and deletions to the agenda. Uh, right now I have a request to uh, add to the agenda uh, a request or a, a consideration of the demolition for 109 Owen Circle and Battle Grove uh, and a Closed session in this meeting for personnel matters. Is there any other uh, items that need to be added or deleted? Question. Yes, sir, Councilman Knight. Um, out in programs, are we going to talk about that today? Um, I, I didn't understand we're going to talk about that. I think maybe if there's a clarification, we can ask the manager when he provides his update. And, uh, Thank you. Unless you want to add it to the agenda. Specific. Can we add it just in case we need it, please? Okay, so we have uh, the addition of consideration of demolition for 109 Owen Circle Drive uh, housing program, I suppose. I guess we could call it that. And then uh, closed session personnel meeting at the closure of the meeting. <laughs> I will add those as items uh, 11, 12, and 13 uh, to the agenda. If I have a motion to approve those, so moved. Okay. Motion made by Councilman Knight, second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? 
Carrie Dunn, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, the agenda has been modified as uh, accordingly. With that, I'll turn the meeting over to our city manager, Keith Rogers, Jr., uh, for an update on the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I wanted to share that the Rocky Mount Police Department is holding its back to school pack a patrol car event. Uh, it will be every day this week from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we are asking for donations so that we may uh, send kids back to school this uh, year with a fully stocked book bag with supplies. Additionally, our downtown live program continues this summer. And so this Thursday, we will be featuring chairman of the board. And again, this starts at 6 p.m. on the Imperial Center Lawn. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any questions or comments for our city manager? Yes. Yes, sir. Councilman Knight? Yeah, my understanding that we uh, have two programs that has been launched, uh, urgent repair and housing repair. Uh, manager mentioned those for our citizens. This is very important. One of the priorities of this council is reference to housing. Yes, that is correct, Councilman. We are accepting applications for those programs. And my, my question, uh, I have a question about that, or I can save it for that uh, line item. Well, since we got into the agenda, I would suggest that we just discuss it when we get item 12. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Manager May related to his update? Okay, hearing none, we'll move right along. Uh, there are petitions to be received from the public. The public petitions portion of the city council meeting is an opportunity for the public comment, and the city council appreciates your attendance and values all citizen input. This is an opportunity to express views and concerns about the city of Rocky Mount to the council. However, in most cases, council members will not respond to public comments, but we may refer a matter to the city manager or staff or staff for follow up. Time will be monitored or give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that sign up sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the city council meeting. And if an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to speak on the group's comment, to present the group's comments. If your comments are in regard to an item that is subject to a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak, and time will also be monitored. Your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. So you cancel the request, you please adhere to the following guidelines to complete a sign-in sheet, just comments to the council as a whole and not to individual council members or staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated, and you'll be asked to sit down or removed from the meeting. Keep comments three minutes. Three minutes. This time I'd like to invite Mr. Butch Dancy to the podium. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Is it on? Is it on? Okay, good evening. Um, I just want to say I attended the LGC meeting um, or a little over a week ago, and I was pretty much pleased with uh, uh, the presentation, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, and uh, the other two gentlemen, I forgot what their names were, but they did a great job. Uh, it was worth my while taking time off my work, uh, off my job to go and to capture it on video because when I looked at it um, on the, well, they only show the audio when you go on the LGC line, so I want to see it for myself. And I think the one that was on on Zoom, they couldn't even see the folk in the room. But again, uh, y'all did a great job. Um, um, there was two more people there, but uh, they didn't have to say much anything, so um, I don't know how they would do it. But what comes to my attention is uh, they are far away of the uh, the um, state treasurer uh, made it clear that he had been following Rocky Mountain since 2016, and it was obvious that he has an issue with Rocky Mountain. And so that uh, I have flashback to the um, event center parking deck and uh, a hotel. Uh, at that time, we know um, um, what's the name the 
say all the best words on the on the uh, LGC commission, and and so there goes how uh, Rocky Mount is not um, did not get a chance to go to before the LGC board, and they would not have gotten a chance to go before the board this time if it had not been for Ron Penny and our uh, opponent. Uh, first Black State Auditor uh, Jessica Holmes. So again, um, I was pleased, but now waiting to see uh, when the hotel and parking deck is going to come back on the agenda because maybe the state treasurer has got over his ego with Rocky Mountain. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes our public uh, comments portion. Brings us to item number eight, which is consideration of the consent agenda, I'm asking for a motion uh, to be inclusive of approval or assessment contract authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the contract on behalf of the city to approve addition to the um, CIP and to adopt resolutions and ordinances as listed. Is there a motion? Second. Motion made by Councilman Joyner, second by Councilman Daltridge. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. The consent agenda passes. That brings us to item number nine on our agenda, which is consideration of a resolution of intent to enter into a lease agreement with Asif Thayer doing business as Java Group Inc. for the city owned property at 207 East Thomas Street. It's a five year lease with an automatic renewal for one successive term of five years. Annual rent is 42000 The renewed lease term will increase 5% to $44,100. Um, initial term be from August 26th of 2024 through August 26th of 2029. Renewal term be August 26th of 2029 through August 26th of 2034. Uh, with this, uh, the resolution will authorize the city clerk to advertise the proposed agreement pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 160A-272. Uh, this item was deferred from the last meeting, and so this time I'll look for a motion to adopt this resolution. Vote to adopt the motion that we have this session. Yes, sir. Councilman uh, Blackwell's made the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second, second was by Councilman Joyner. This time, uh, we'll enter into discussion. I will recognize you, Councilman Blackwell, since you have uh, the first one to say you'd like to hear. It. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, first of all, very excited that uh, we have uh, folks who are interested in helping Rocky Mountain to expand and grow our footprint downtown and throughout our city. I'm very happy to see that. And I'm also um, interested in ensuring that uh, the same spirit of which we're recruiting uh, this uh, restaurant tour and, and successful entrepreneur to downtown Rocky Mountain today. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Thankful for the creativity, for the dedication, and for the resources that the city is going to put into that. I'd like to see that same effort and energy and resources allocated to other individuals and, and efforts in downtown Rocky Mountain and uh, find ways to incent property, um, not just owners, but the renters of property. We spent a lot of uh, money in trying to get the stock. Uh, up to par, as we noted before, we said several buildings are literally, you know, built in 19, early 1900s, late, uh, I'm sorry, you yeah, know, late 1800s, early 1900s, and to uh, be able to not just renovate the buildings, but we also, we want to grow downtown, need to incent uh, with working capital, with improvements for renters that come in as well um, into our downtown. Um, we, it takes more because the condition of the properties are worse, and we still only have one downtown. So, but I like to be able to see in our discussions at Committee to Hall, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, um, and, and Mr. Mayor, in our discussions with our manager and with his team, I like to see um, a robust uh, uh, program related to recruitment and retention of who we have downtown. I'd like to know how much money we have allocated to do that. And I also feel that um, with this level of investment, which we are looking at as a key um, stakeholder in our downtown, we really want to make sure it works. So I'm thankful that our team put um, thought into ensuring that we had a stable um, uh, restaurateur who had success at that location 
for the next how many years? Ten years, right? That's a ten-year commitment, which is great. Um, I like to see that same effort and energy, and we we'll look for that same level of investment when we talk about uh, current uh, entrepreneurs who actually live here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on this matter? But yes, Councilman Harris. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in reviewing this um, information that's in our agenda today, I went back and two weeks ago we had this on the agenda and the matter was deferred, as, as she so stated. But there are three pages of this proposed lease agreement that are not included in today's agenda. If you take a look at the lease agreement, it goes from page 19 to 23, and then it skips over to 22 or 23, and then the signature of page 23 or 23. Let me bring to the public's attention the three pages that are not in the rental agreement that we have before us today. Appendix A, which goes at great length. <coughs> about uh, what the city is going to be doing and going to be working with the proposed landlord. And by the way, it's great to see that we have interest from an out-of-town restaurant uh, person coming to downtown right now. But Appendix 1, landlord will purchase, replace, or repair the following restaurant equipment. And it gives a list. Number two, landlord will purchase, replace, or repair the following, following furniture and restaurant fixtures. And then three, landlord will perform the cosmetic improvements, etc. Appendix two, I want to read a couple of items. Tenant will make other improvements to enhance for the business operations such as exterior lighting and awnings. All improvements affixed to the building are eligible for reimbursement to the tenant. The total estimated cost of tenant improvements is not to exceed $100,000. And all tenant installed improvements shall become attached to the property. For the city to be responsible for up to $100,000, but such language is not in this proposed lease before us today. I question why was these three pages omitted. Thank you, Councilman Harris. Is there any other comment? Yes, sir. Councilman Joyner, I'll recognize you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Blackwell, Councilman Harrison. Um, and this item was deferred. Um, today, and I've had an opportunity to visit uh, the restaurant and uh, to see some of the operation. Uh, I want to say that it's uh, very community grounded and uh, it's very inclusive, uh, supporting community work within the city that they're in now. And I hope that we will look forward to those same relationships. Uh, that this owner has presented uh, in other areas of operation. So I've been very pleased with what I've seen. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Knight. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge that uh, I, mean, I am in support of uh, helping anyone uh, who would like to move in our downtown area or as restaurant or any other business. Um, but I also would like to see uh, that same energy uh, when it comes to our local uh, residents or business owner. Uh, we have a particular uh, restaurant and comedy club that's about to open in our downtown area. And they were trying to uh, get help from the city in reference to opening up that particular restaurant, that venue. And it was told uh, to the person that uh, we didn't have any funding of 
available um, to help this young man. Uh, it's probably because of the prior owner or the owner had already used the grants um, that the city had offered. I don't know if it's a five-year waiting period before anyone else can apply for a grant. But this is an uh, entrepreneur that want to move into a building and to bring a eatery down to uh, in our downtown area in a comedy club. I would like for this council to direct our manager and staff uh, if um, the owner of the building have used the facade grants, uh, the DBAP, the roof, or whatever grant that, grants that we have to offer, that staff will come up uh, with a grant um, for entrepreneur. It could be uh, uh, equipment, uh, from equipment to sprinkler to whatever it would take to get that business um, into that um, space. And so where I do support this, I also would like to support uh, the young man and um, his partner uh, come into our downtown with a seafood restaurant and comedy club. And I think it's embarrassing and it's a shame that uh, we can help outside uh, businesses and cannot help our local uh, local businesses here in Rocky Mountain. So I would like to at least hear from the council and that we would give the direction of the manager and the staff uh, to craft uh, a grant or opportunities for local residents that can benefit from uh, uh, funding from the city as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Nunn. I'll recognize you, Councilman Daltridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess I echo with what um, Councilman Harris just spoke about and then uh, I, I would, um, Rocky Mount, we, we own a lot of properties and we have a, we provide a lot of leases. And I think fundamentally the city of Rocky Mount should not be in the leasing business. And, but we are. And, but we do have leases that we go into. And we, we, we have a history of entering leases and we have a, a history of leases, um, they're, they're, they're broken or for whatever reason don't work out. But the city historically has ended up, um, for lack of a better term, eating a lot of expense that's involved in these leases. Mr. Manager, I'm going to vote in support of this, but what I'm going to ask you and your staff to do, and I know we have a third party that overlooks these leases, but with whatever's in the lease, whether it's to make sure there's no mold, to make sure that you know, whatever's attached to the building when the tenant leaves, that whatever's there and is supposed to be there stays there. Um, because this is a city owned building, and that's why we're uh, investing the money we are in this building because it is city owned. But I'm, I'm requesting that we have someone go through our leases and make sure and put it on the calendar, and then we go through and we inspect these um, facilities whether it's on a monthly, quarterly, biannually, or annual basis, and certainly when the lease comes to an end. So um, I don't know how the rest of the city council feels about the, about my request, but Mr. Manager, I, I'm placing that request on you, and, and hopefully, um, and not just for this lease, but all the leases. Thank you, Councilman. I'll recognize you, Councilman Blackwell. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, everything I prefaced has been fleshed out and built out. And, and if you uh, understand the stock, the buildings that are there, the Douglas Block is probably the most renovated building and now the oldest renovation that we have. So it's coming towards probably um, another level. All of those buildings are probably coming to another level of need to be refreshed and um, and ensure that our, our capital that we own, as, as Mr. Darkish pointed out, um, is appropriate so that the tenants are not having to deal uh, with unsafe environmental issues, especially since uh, many of those properties are food based. Nobody wants to smell musty when you're trying to eat, right? <laughs> uh, so that's really important. 
Uh, but also the um, point that uh, Ms. Knight brought out, Councilman Knight brought out about um, the seafood restaurant downtown, that's a great example of exactly what I was saying, is that if we help to help bring the building up to basic standards, uh, that gentleman has invested out of his own pocket $60,000 to continue the renovation that was needed, plus, um, you know, make that building suitable for his own purposes, and still not enough. We really need an aggressive uh, working capital strategy for downtown. And I'm not recommending that the city have to pay for everything, but we are responsible for leading the recruitment and designing, I believe, the um, approach and the packages and the relationships uh, that are required to see um, a beautiful downtown like Rocky Mountain uh, really jump, so jump off. It's going to take more than just sort of random piecemeal here and there. And, and I also am concerned that the creativity of our team, um, while it's great that you look for something new, it's also great to work with what's already here too. So I am, so perhaps Mr. Manager, uh, Mr. Mayor Protein, what you can do to assist the manager and having a conversation with us. It's maybe scheduled this on a committee hall meeting. And um, then we can talk about uh, details that we'd like to see um, and, and give the manager clearer direction so he knows how to marshal his resources as well. Um, I, I feel uh, that we miss out when we wait for somebody else to do the work and then they come back, they do a lot of hard work and come back and it's not quite what we want. And I think it's wise to at least set some parameters up front and say, well, look at this, 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 and this. Give the team something to focus on and then have them come back and have us review it. And then we can tweak and move forward. That's my recommendation. Thank you. Councilman Jordan? <clears throat> yes. Um, once we get these buildings up to par and we come to the end of the lease, uh, who responsibility to make sure that these buildings are left in the condition that we started out in, that we don't have to go back in and refurbish them all over again. These buildings are city-owned property, so within the lease it covers the maintenance and the condition that the building should be left in once the lease is up. So that's covered in the lease, but these are city-owned properties. And so it's our responsibility to maintain that uh, appropriate term throughout the lease. Regardless of who the lessee is. Yes, sir. Councilman Harris, I'll recognize you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want a clarification. Is Appendix A going to be included in this rental agreement? Is Appendix 1, which stipulates landlord's responsibility, and Appendix 2, tenant's responsibility regarding improvements? Are they going to be in the rental agreement? Yes, Councilman. As you correctly pointed out, those appendices, those appendices were included on the last agenda when this was deferred. So I think it just maybe got lost in translation, but the uh, items that you read are intended to be included in the lease. And I would just remind Council that tonight we are advertising, and so Council will, it will be back before Council to approve, so we will uh, double check and make sure that the clerk's office has the correct document. Well, I guess that's, that clarifies my, my question is, it shouldn't have been overlooked. It should have been included. That's correct. <clears throat> Mayor, call the question. All right, question has been called. Uh, we have a motion and a second to enter into this lease and to advertise it. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, item nine carries. That brings us to item 10, which is consideration of a resolution approving the settlement of fiscal year 2023-2024 taxes due and collected and appointing Latasha Hollis, collector of revenue. That authorizes the collector of revenue to collect taxes for fiscal year commencing July 1 of 2024. This is due to the retirement of our current collector revenue. Um, and so, um, uh, anyway, I'm asking for a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Second. Second. Second by Councilman TJ Walker. Uh, need for, I guess I'll recognize you, Councilman Knight. Uh, yes. Uh, when reading this, it 
giving this hall the authority uh, to collect taxes. Uh, in order to collect taxes, we should also um, give the authority to, uh, if, if there's a lien on uh, the property, the authority to collect. So I think we should include that language, give this authority to release liens as well. I don't have more from Jones Statute 105 373 in front of me, but what does that authorize that may very well include? Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm pulling it up. Uh, generally speaking, the, the authority to collect taxes includes the uh, authority to enforce the taxes and deal with those kind of issues. Uh, if, if the council would prefer to expressly say that, I don't particularly see any harm there. Um, it, it, it's up to the council. I would just reading this and a lot of times when collecting uh, especially on uh, loans or people deceased and you have um, liens that that's part of the collection process just want to make sure that that was if, if i may that is correct this is this was intended to be a perfunctory item due to the retirement of staff but we are currently actively collecting taxes <coughs> liens and any other monies owed to the city through the business and collection services agency so can we amend that and let it reflect that as well according to what our attorney just mentioned all right, so the request to make sure that we add specifically to give the ability to place liens on the property, whether or not that's mentioned, really? it is. I forgot who made the motion in the second, but would, uh, would you would you amend the motion, Councilman uh, Joyner, to include that language? Yes. Okay, so then what we're going to add is the express ability to collect the use liens as a tool of the collection of taxes as it relates to the duties of Latasha Hall, Councilman T.J. Walker, or Jim. It's still second. It's the mayor. Yes, sir. I think, was, I think it was also released. So and released. That's well. That's why that was the first one released. Yes, correct. Thank you for that clarification. Any other need for conversation or clarification on this matter? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, all opposed, like so. Okay. I bring item eleven, which is a request for the demolition of one hundred nine Owen Circle. Um, I will. I believe, uh, Councilman Blackwell, you brought this yes, uh, concern, yes, so I'll I, turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, former, um, not former, but my peers, thank you, and to the residents. Um, I, was, I was submitted, presented a um, present, a petition from uh, neighbors in Battleboro who live on Owen Circle. Um, this property that you can see the pictures of, Thank you for scrolling down. This is what they've been looking at for the last two years. It was a property damaged by fire two years ago. Um, it's been through several iterations of code enforcement, and I believe it's um, at the end the owner has um, collected the insurance and uh, moved to another town uh, within our region, but not within the city limits of Rocky Mount. And there are no plans to demolish the property. Uh, presents uh, unsafe, unsafe opportunities. It's dangerous. Um, who wants to wake up every morning and look at that? And and it also has vermin and other things coming from it. And when you walk past it, it smells really bad. It's an environmental hazard. It's unsightly. It's unseemly. And when we talk about um, needing demolition within our poor city communities, this is a very good reason why. And in, in the staff, I mean, the staff is informing people, uh, the reason I'm having to bring it is because the staff is informing people that the city has no plans to demolish properties within the city limits of Rocky Mountain. And if that's the case, then we'll just, I'll have to continue to bring these properties directly here because the neighborhood, um, is paying the cost and the price uh, for um, unsightly, dangerous, deficient, and embarrassing property. So I'd like to ask the council, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the demolition ordinance for this property, 109 Owens Circle, in the Battleboro community in the city of Rocky Mountain. So 
All right, got a motion made by Councilman Blackwell, second. I think there was a fight over here. It's going to be first. Councilman Joyner. Uh, is there a need for discussion? Councilman Daltridge, I'll recognize you. Um, Councilman Blackwell, I'm, I'm fully in favor of uh, taking properties such as uh, the, the demolition process of properties such as this. Um, I know in Councilman Harris's um, board, there was one for three, four, maybe even five years it was like this. I would be curious to know the process of going through and tearing down these houses. I know there's a legal process that we have to go through, and I'd be curious with this 109 Owen Circle if where we are in that process. And even if we do approve this one, can we can we tear it down because it's still technically someone's property? I think we have to go through the the rules to get get through that. I'm not exactly sure of the process, but um certainly in favor of it. But and it's not only in here, but it's all over Rocky Mountain that we have this issue. But it does come down to some to money, and I'd be curious also, would like to know, I'm curious, would like to know the, the expense of uh, demolition on this. And once we demolish this, I'm sure we have some sort of lien on this property. Once it's sold, um, or before it could be sold, that we at least recoup any monies that we possibly have on this. And is there any legal um, action that we can take against the property owner to recoup our money or even have them um, just to recoup our money because this thing needs to go ahead and come down. I don't want to try to answer that. I mean, I got a bunch of answers, but I'm not sure they're right. I'll turn it over to Council. How about that? I'll let us Council Harris. So, so Council and Dr. You're, you're correct that the city's authority to just go in and tear down someone's property is, is limited uh, significantly by statute. Uh, there are, the city does have some authority to uh, summarily abate public health nuisances. Uh, I know that authority in Rocky Mount has been exercised to demolish property. Um, my, my suggestion would be to perhaps direct staff to make sure before we just order this torn down, make sure that we can justify that. Um, short of that, there are other processes uh, that can be used under the statutes to demolish. Each has its own notice and hearing opportunity. Um, so we essentially have to identify the basis and then move forward based on the, the governing procedure. Um, as to the cost of demolition, you're, you're correct that it, you know, almost under any process, if the city goes in and demolishes, uh, the cost of demolition uh, are taxable to the property owner. Um, if not paid, it's a lien on the property. Um, at, at some point, that lien can be foreclosed upon. Um, but, but my suggestion when we're, when we're talking about specific properties uh, is that we, we have a little bit of time. It, the materials prepared pretty clearly look like this needs to be demolished. Um, but before we, we jump to that step, uh, I would request an opportunity to at least confirm which authority we're going to use and, and go from there. So, Councilman Blackwell, would you be willing to uh, maybe rephrase the motion so the long lines well, of allocating the money to well, that? Well, well, what about this? Okay. Why don't we have the staff, when they complete these processes, and it's clear that the property needs to be demolished, the staff should be bringing that to City Council, not City Council having to take a methodology like this. And almost impose it upon the staff. That's been the process in Rocky Mount until now. So um, the questions that our attorney has wisely framed has already taken place. But now you're asking me to go find that information out. That's not my job. That's the job of the manager and his team. Somebody gets paid to do that. We got plenty of properties that should be demolished, that have gone through the process, but the last step is not taken, which means come to the city council and ask for the properties to be demolished. What's the point of going through the process if the process is not completed? Now, we've had budget, we budgeted prior to this budget um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to take properties down. So when we discuss housing, 
In our next conversation, you still have to talk about cleaning up these neighborhoods so we can bring new housing or renovated housing into public. I would also recommend that we put back on the table the uh, land trust opportunities, which we started talking about, which we deferred until we got more information. And this would be a wonderful opportunity if we need to start collecting properties like this, if the owners have no interest, no willingness to do something about this, the neighbors should not be held hostage because somebody technically has a right because they own the property. They own the property and they're creating problems for everyone else. And the city needs to step in and say, well, take it off your hands because we know what to do with it. So I hate to just let drop this matter. If you don't so mind. you're asking me, so I, I will I at least allocate the money and, and right. take some sort of process with the timeline. I think it would be right. appropriate. I'm, I'm deferred, Mr. Knight. I push your thought. Yeah. I'm just still surprised that we had this conversation. Um, we had this conversation in depth months and months ago. It's not staff not doing the work. But when the staff do the work, see the manager have to sign off on or bring it to the council. So we need to direct this to Mr. Keith Rogers Jr. Because I brought several houses. And he was adamant about not demolishing the house. And to our new new attorney, we have a ordinance that gives the council the authority when it goes through the process to demolish houses. There's nothing new to Rocky Mountain. Mm-hmm. So, Councilman, I, I, if I could, keep it back on the right. subject here, if we can modify this uh, a motion or drop it, either one. I'm well, we one. modify the motion that if this particular property, uh, 109 Wings Court, if it has gone through the proper process, then it needs to come to the council so the council can approve the demolition. But what I, uh, um, so I, do Councilman Blackwell did the the motion since yeah. he made the motion? Yeah, Councilman Mike did make, I mean, Blackwell did make the motion. If you would revise it, that would be helpful, Councilman Blackwell. Okay, and points of revision, that's what I need to say. Council Blackwell, Council Blackwell, Council Blackwell. Okay. So, um, I'd like to revise the motion for the demolition of 109 Owen Circle in the Battleboro community in Rocky Mountain. That we would um, ensure that the uh, legal process has been adhered to and completed. Um, that, that we also allocate the appropriate funding to demolish the property and place a lien on the property that the city would be able to enforce. When appropriate. Okay. Who had the second? The council joiner was that acceptable to you? Yes. Okay, so we're now voting on uh, a motion to ensure legal process uh, is taken care of as it relates to one of the nine circle. We will allocate funding for the demolition of that once that process has been deemed complete and that uh, we will place a lien on that particular property to recoup any expenditures the city has made uh, going forward. I have a motion and a second. Council uh, discussion. I'll recognize you, Council Harris. This is no way regarding the uh, recommendation, which has been seconded. But Councilman and I brought this issue up, as he stated, several, several months ago. And I made the, the, the statement back then that it would be nice if we could have a listing of all properties that have suffered damage due to fire. We as a council need to know what we are staring at. Because I can envision every month a council member is going to have a petition to come to the council to vote on this particular piece of property needs to be demolished. So I am asking the manager, maybe for the next COW meeting or whenever, provide us with a detailed list of all burned properties and what 
if any legal process has been started for each of the properties. So we can have a better indication of what we are staring at. And lastly, I would like for the manager to let us know, I think demolition in this year's budget is 200,000. I'm not sure. But Councilman Blackwell mentioned that in previous years, or maybe this was Councilman Knight, that in previous, year, previous years, money was budgeted, and if, if it's not expense, how much rollover is there? So exactly what are the dollars that we have approved to demolish houses? Okay, thank, thank you, man. Thank you, Councilman Harris. So we are, we are moving on point a little bit. I do have a motion and a second. I'd like to bring it back to center. But with that said, just because it's been brought up, I'll, uh, I'll give the floor to the manager if he wants to answer some of those questions. Of course, it's just leaving us a dangling uh, idea out there. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to add a little context to the discussion, not to debate the merits, uh, but I just wanted to, uh, for the, the public particularly, because it is our staff that is in the communities that are working to make sure that uh, we do uh, code enforcement so that we can improve our communities. And so I just wanted to remind the council that the three properties that were previously discussed that council directed be demolished, those three properties have been demolished. So we have been adhering to council desire and we have, Mr. Attorney, have been working to make sure that all those legal uh, specifications have been met in order to do so. Additionally, I know that uh, our staff has done ride-alongs with the mayor and several council members throughout the wards and throughout the city to identify any additional concerns that the council may have so that we can compile a list and to try to be strategic as well as proactive to the concerns that are brought up, not only by the council, but the concerns that we get directly from citizens. So again, I am happy to uh, entertain any additional uh, houses or properties. Uh, the property that's uh, before us tonight, this is the first time that it has been brought to my attention uh, in this in this regard. So we're happy to look into it. But I think it's important that we, uh, particularly because we also get, I know the council gets feedback from residents and constituents. I know that our staff does as well. So I just wanted to add that additional context and we will certainly be happy to bring back uh, a comprehensive list and an action plan to the council at a future COW. So I, I just I, that I have a concern, Mr. May. So, Mr. Manager, you saying then if this property has gone all the way through the entire process, you have not seen anything related to it. You know, your process is not the process does not call for your eyes to to sign off on the final order. Are you saying that? Where yes, in, in your so in your review process of dilapidated, deteriorated, um, damaged properties, where is the interjection of your perspective? Well, I, I really don't think that it is a perspective matter. It is whether the properties meet the specification and what needs to happen in terms of enforcement. What I'm just saying is, come to your desk because you just said. This is the first time you've heard it the same thing. That, that's correct. And the community is saying that they that this property, and I don't know because your staff has got to determine what the process is, but the community has stated that your department leaders are saying that it has gone through the process almost at the end, but that there is direct there is no present priority on demolition. And if that's true, if that's a perspective the community has, it's not mine because I haven't talked to anybody yet, but if they come to me saying that and your team is saying that to the public, where do they get that impression? Well, again, Councilman, I'm not sure exactly how to answer the impression question. I'm saying that the item that's before us tonight, the property, this is the first time that it's brought to my attention. And so I'm happy to look into it to see where it is in the process. Um, again, I, I wanted to make my comments tonight just to provide clarity that the staff is working to uh, enforce code and to demolish properties where appropriate, not to uh, get into a debate of the merits. But I mentioned prior 
that there are certain requirements that must be met in order for demolition. So there's not a uh, a holding list that we are holding for our moving forward with demolition. Okay, so I'm not debating merits. I'm asking in the process, when do you approve and when do you deny? Again, Councilman, the process does not, depending on the code that is used, does not require additional approval from the council or the manager, depending on the type of uh, demolition that you're using. So what I was trying to express is that it is hard to answer a question about a property that is brought forward in a council meeting tonight without looking for, looking to see what the issues are. And it's going to be on a case by case basis. But I wanted to uh, confirm with the council that we are working code enforcement. There is not a, uh, a, a pause or a, a difference of direction in terms of enforcing code, which includes the demolition of property. Uh, in our recently adopted budget, there is a line item that remains for demolition. And so I know that the cost per house uh, may vary, but we have budgeted resources to do demolition. And I was just reminding the council that we just recently completed the three that council previously uh, asked us to look into and that we are continuing to work to, to do so. So I just wanted to provide that context. Thank you. Now, I'll just take the rest of my conversation the next slide. Yeah, I know it'd be great. And, and, and I think the point's well made. I think council points well made that we want to list what's out there, where it is in the process, to be able to actually have active conversation about it. But right now, I do have a motion on the floor and a second as it relates to ensuring that we go through our process, the process has been made as it relates to one of nine open circle, that we allocate funding uh, for the demolition and that we place a lien for any expenditures associated or incurred by the city of Rocky Mountain property. A uh, motion and a second. Is there any conversation relative to that particular motion? I do. Yes, sir. Councilman, I already recognize Just this one second. I know you want to get through this. Um, we had a very extensive conversation in reference to this. We have a city ordinance or policy uh, that entails everything that we just stated. And so we're not um, tearing down houses um, illegally or wrongfully. And when the community code uh, submits uh, a list of houses or a house, it has to go to uh, Miss Emily. It, before that was Will Deaton. Will Deaton signed it off and he sends it to the city manager. So if you got those three things, two staff members doing that, and it gets to your desk, Mr. Rogers, and you decide not to bring it to this status, then houses would not be demolished according to our ordinance. I have said this over and over again. And so if we go back and read our own ordinance and follow our steps, then the council know what our authority is and what we can and cannot do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I have a motion on the floor and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. That brings us to item number 12, which is the housing program. I have no specifics on that other than, I guess, a general conversation point. Who brought that forward? I cannot remember. Mm -hmm. Councilman Knight, uh, I'll give you the floor. Uh, yes, I, mean, I want to clear up something. Uh, last month, I guess, I asked a question that's related to community development about a position, community engagement manager, uh, which I have not seen that position, uh, job position, in our uh, compensation and comp plan uh, that we approved. And then I asked, the city manager wouldn't give me a direct answer, and Councilman Walker answered that and said it was in the uh, plan that we approved. And we asked the clerk to go back and do the research, and upon her research, uh, which she found that it was not. So first of all, I hope that the council needs to ratify this position of community engagement manager. If it's not ratified and voted upon in this council, then that position should not be in operation. Secondly, uh, in April, if you go back and read the minutes that we just approved, April the 8th, it details a lengthy conversation about the housing grants that we currently have. 
But on today, it was released that we're only offering two programs. Now, the council has approved four housing programs for our citizens. It was voted upon, and here they are, clerk bottom. These are administrative policy. So out of those four, um, city manager and staff decided to eliminate two without the authority of the city council. <laughs> then the policy that we approve, which were originally a grant, now they are a loan which we don't have a policy to dictate that. Also, the amount has gone from 15000 to 50000 and we have no, again, what is it called? Administrative. Administrative, administrative policy. And we have residents coming down to City Hall, and I took the time to come down here today and starting to register for these programs. Our last council meeting, we asked the manager and his staff to go back. First of all, they said that we approved this. And Madam Clerk, did you find that anywhere in the minutes? I did not find it. Thank you. Uh, when the consortium or the consultant came about the home funds, we had a presentation by the uh, coordinator surprisingly, and not the director or the deputy director. And just to this council, I've never seen a staff person who was not a department head make a presentation to this council. I've never seen that. And the information was unclear, and Councilman Harris and others asked the staff to go back and in an additional email, we asked the manager to break down those programs and who applied. Uh, we had waiting lists and people got letters saying they were approved and then they got letters saying we didn't have the money. During the budget session, I asked the question why we have money. And the, and the answer that was given by the uh, city manager that the citizens were not applying for it. That is not true. The citizens were told they were not offered. Um, we were not offering those programs. So today, we got two programs that have not been approved by this council. We got two programs that's not being offered when we heard from citizens. It was the matching rebate program that's been approved by the council in this document, and the workforce housing that was approved by this council that we're not offering. And I ask that you will go back and bring that back. And I don't think the authority lies with the, any manager to overrule this council without coming back to this board. Now, if we as a board don't do what we're supposed to do, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to be disrespected. It's on any individual of you all. But I'm just sick and tired of it. So how can we offer these programs that we have not approved? So, Councilman Knight, is there a motion in here somewhere? It should be another motion because it's insubordinate because he continues to do it. Now, if, 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 if he can defy this council, how in the heck his staff and employees can respect his authority? And I'm sick and tired of it. And who gives your authority or your staff to go to any school of government without coming to our attorney before you, which is Jeff Rose, Port and Spruill, with over 40 years of experience. Now I have this right, this crap that you might not give me a time, but this, these programs were well thought out approximately six to eight years ago. And it was a multifaceted to address the number of housing, housing challenges that we have had. And we went through that 80% AMI up to 125 AMI, but we were addressing, if you look at the statute, it gives lens 
the authority that we can address blighted area in our community. And Chris Miller, who sat in that seat, said if we don't address neighborhoods like North Green, who have houses that have started to be deteriorated, if we don't do something now, they're going to be dilapidated, and then they're going to come to the council to be demolished. So with the brain trust of Peter Barney, uh, David Combs, Chris Miller, myself, Lamont, which is Judge Lamont now, and others, Ruben, which we had a robust conversation about how to address the needs of our community. And now all the things that we have put in place are going to be rolled back 20 years, 30 years. And our citizen who elected us has given us the things that we need to know to help this community through our community, our neighborhood association. I'm going I'm to I'm stop it here. But, Mayor, I'm tired of being disrespected as a city council member for over 20 years, not bragging. But at least give me some kind of respect and in my intellect and in the history that I bring to this table that some of you who just got here who never lived here and still don't live here don't understand the needs of our people but they want to roll back the program and the benefits that the people have worked for all these years now need our help and it's not right and it's not right for this board if we sit here and allow this to happen. One person snatch away something that was crafted to benefit this community. And we are mirrored all across the state when it comes to new market tax credit, historic tax credit, or whatever. Rocky Mount. So now I guess we're a bunch of dummies and hillbillies that they think we don't know Jack. And it's, it, it's just sickening to me, to me. You get folks to come here. I'm not saying all out of state folks, but they come here, they Rocky Mount, Mayberry, they don't know what they're doing. They eating it. They just the ham sandwich we are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but this stuff and is, and listen, there's a counselor. Yes, I think your point's been well made, and, uh, and I appreciate your thoughts. With that said, it, it needs to be a motion here or some direction on this. Otherwise, I, I feel like it's probably time so, to go to close so session. What I'd like to do, Mr. Mayor, I'll recognize you, Councilman. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. I like I like for us to continue this discussion and create the whole name the structures. And I would like us to be able to outline um, what exactly it is, maybe in advance, uh, so we know how to plan and how to prepare. Um, perhaps all of us should be polled again. We've already done it one time, but we've received insufficient response to what we've asked. Um, let's do it one more time. I'm ready to dance again. And um, have that detailed conversation and commit the whole and commit the entire committee to all meeting so no one feels pressed to have to, you know, make a 15 minute presentation, 15 minute conversation. Let's just go ahead and schedule a meeting where all we do is talk about housing. And do that. I'm in favor of it, but uh, I don't know if I remember. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir, Councilman. I, I've already spoken with uh, the manager and the attorney so we can give them a heads up so we can have this committee the whole meeting towards this that was put in place. I think an email was sent two weeks ago. So I don't know if we're going to do it on the next committee the whole or the following. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Um, but it's already been put in place. Yeah. With that said, I would love to entertain a motion going to the session. Second. Who was first? <laughs> the doctor who second was Peter. Yes, just have a comment. Which will come. Uh, Make a very short plea. I want to uh, want to thank our SM staff and uh, our assistant city manager, Elder Dane, and also uh, Joe Dunn and Parks and Rick as they put together the first um, quarterly event.
downtown date night at Vincent. A uh, great event. It's probably one of the um, most extraordinary events you're going to see in Rocky Mountain where you can pay $40 for a general ticket, $85 for a gourmet dinner, three hours of entertainment uh, with mainstream uh, comedian and artists from all across the nation. So I just want to say thank you to our event center staff, uh, and to our, our staff here at the city, also parts and rec. Uh, job well done and looking forward to the next quarter. Uh, then also looking forward to this housing conversation. I think that helps with, as we heard earlier about the demolitions, uh, I think one of the issues, I know I've been on Castle now five years, prior to that, the conversation sort of changed where we boarded up houses, uh, then we stopped, uh, then we demolished houses, and then we stopped due to how the communities began to look with houses and gaps in communities. So I think in that housing conversation, that's going to be the whole if we provide some clear direction um, that matches the allocation of funding that we have, I think it will keep us from uh, running into these, these, these errors. But again, thank you. Okay, I have a motion and second for closed session. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. We're now in closed session. We'll be having a committee room. <laughs> What about YouTube? <laughs> 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 Uh, a motion on get rid of city manager for insubordination. Every meeting is the same thing. I will do this and get back with you. When in the hell is they gonna deal with this guy? As Andre Knight said, he has been very, very, very disrespectful to this council. And what I think is, uh, going back to what I said earlier uh, during the public comments about the um, I see the same thing going on with the city manager. Obviously, he's trying to prove a point to somebody, and it looks like he has an issue with our certain council. So, we have a legitimate problem. And it needs to be taken care of. A motion needs to be made that this guy is removed from all the people and sit him in. And then on the very end, uh, the energy is being put into uh, what happened downtown, but no energy into, no energy into um, um, all the things that they talk about and no uh, comment. I have a good problem with that. Dr. 